So welcome back to week two. This is segment 2.1, linking technologies and markets, key issues. And in particular, we're going to talk about products and underlying technologies. And here with me is Chris Tucci. Yeah, thanks. And it's great, he, great to be back he, here. You he will... Another upgrade in the height department here. <laughs> exactly. Looking very tall today. Yeah, Thank so you. we are working. <laughs> so what we will be doing today uh, with this segment is to introduce you to the term technological fungibility and what it actually means for the creation of high-tech ventures. And when you think about that in more detail, you know, this is explained very well on this slide. Uh, technologies can be combined with other technologies to form products. So underlying a product are different sorts of technologies. But when you recombine these technologies, you know, you see it here, technology B, C, D, E, and A. When you recombine these elements, you know, you might be able to create another type of product, which then can cater to another set of end customers. And this is this whole logic of technological fungibility right. that we discuss in management uh, since the 1950s, uh, which means, well, one set of technologies can serve multiple markets. So from a technology entrepreneur's perspective, you know, your underlying competences and technology mm. can actually uh, be used to, to cater to multiple market domains. And that's right. beautiful because many of these domains might be better than the one that you thought of. You know? so, so in this particular graphic here then, uh, so this product is based on A, C, E, and D. Exactly. And uh, E is also used in the second product over here. And B is also used in this third one along with D. Exactly. So, so that gives you a lot of flexibility in your venture creation because you can say, well, my technology is fungible and it can render purposes for multiple sets of customers. What the interesting point is that we will come back later in another segment is that all these end customer markets, uh, they typically have different properties. You know, mm -hmm. some of these markets will be better ground, more fertile ground for firm right. creation than others. You know, we will discuss that in a separate segment. But that's the beauty of having fungible technologies or right. fungible competences right. in that sense. That's nice. We start here with thinking about technology, but you can also start here on the right side with thinking about a, an end user customer mm. and say, okay, in order to cater to that end customer, you know, you need to develop a product with underlying technologies. Mm. But once you're working on the technologies, you know, you might right. have the idea, well, this could actually be used to serve other end customers we are different sorts of products. So, right. so the independent of where you actually start on the right side here, on the left side, um, this is a process that can, you know, that gives you flexibility as an entrepreneur. And that is something where you as an entrepreneur can have a lot of impact in how your firm is created and how your firm ultimately will look like. Let's look at a concrete example here. This is Canon, a company that makes uh, different kinds of camera devices. And this is a, the classic story from the, you know, um, uh, Prahalad and Hamill article from years ago that basically shows that they have expertise in certain areas, you know, precision mechanics, fine optics, and microelectronics. So um, looking at this graphic more closely, you can see that for a basic camera here, um, you know, you just need precision mechanics and fine optics. And these precision mechanics, of course, are going through everything that they're doing. So we just think about this whole column here. This, this is really covering everything. And then there's certain other combinations with things uh, that enable them to make specific products. You know, if you think about microelectronics here, those, you know, for example, an autofocus camera requires all three of these Compl different kinds of competencies. Yeah. And that, you know, if you move back to the last slide and, and think about it, you know, that's exactly this technological fungibility. Right. You have precision mechanics as one technological competence. You combine it with other types of competence. Then this provides you with a different type of product, and this can render a different type of service. So you can think of your company as possessing competences. You know, this right. is a young company that possesses competences, of course. You know, you, you want to develop some others, but but you have competences as well. And these are fungible. Right. And it's not God-given that you only focus on one product with one market domain attached to it. it. There could be lots of opportunities. Right. In fact, here you can see there are certain other things that are quite different from cameras, a laser fax, you know, for mm -hmm. example, <laughs> or a plain paper copier. It's not exactly the same, uh, not the same market. As exactly. a camera. So therefore, it can be used to combine, make different things, and attacking different markets. You know, and then a bit looking into the future of this MOOC, you know, these types of product markets that you're look, looking at here, they have different type of features. Some are growing, some are declining, some are more fertile growing in right. your firm creation than others. You know, of course, this is a larger company, but here we only try to make this point that technology is fun, fungible and can cater to multiple domains. So let's look at another example. It's a, a famous example. It's the heat shield tiles from the space shuttle. It's a mm. ceramic that is used to protect the space shuttle from 
from uh, when it re-enters uh, the orbit uh, from, from going up in flames, in fact, mm. you know, and, and bad right. things happened when, when they <laughs> fell off. But uh, the main point what we want to make do uh, point out here is, is this ceramic has certain properties. Yeah. Right. It can be used to protect the space shuttle. Right. You know, how many would you sell? You probably sell 10,000 per space shuttle <laughs> times for space most. shuttle when they are still <laughs> flying. <laughs> so you're selling an overall 40,000. You know, right. um, this is a limit market. It's it's a cool market, of course. You know, but it's right. limited. So if you are right. creating a high growth venture, you might want to ask yourself: Is this the right market right. to create that type of growth that I'm aspiring to? And and uh, if you look at it, uh, well, it's it might be a stepping stone to something bigger and better, but it's it's not the growth market that will allow you to to actually grow your company into a billion dollar enterprise uh, as such. You know? So, thinking about this uh, ceramic in a bit more detail, there are other applications that are right. possible. You know, let's look at those. So to analyze this, you might want to ask yourself, well, what application areas could this technology be used in? You know, and so we, we did a little brainstorming here. The first three things that we thought of uh, it could be used in catalytic converters, mm. for example, in a car. It could be used in refrigerators, and it may be used in chimneys. Exactly. So, you know, while each of these may be better than selling, you know, a limited number to a small number of space shuttles, um, they may have very, very quite different uh, characteristics to make them attractive for mm. the entrepreneur. Yeah. So, you know, the, the catalytic converter sounds very good because it could be a huge market. On the other hand, competition could be very intense uh, in the auto, you know, part supplier industry. So okay. there's, a, there's a big market with a lot of competition. Then you may have less competition in refrigerators, maybe a bigger market, chimneys, etc. So you kind of go through this one step at a time trying to analyze what's the best place to put my technology in terms of the opportunity space. Exactly. And what's quite particularly intriguing, if you think about it, is that you're not only selecting on the most fertile ground for mm. firm creation. You know, some markets are more favorable than others. Right. But you're also shaping the identity of your company, what we right. call organizational identity. You know? Because <laughs> if you think about it, it's, you know, if you cater to the aerospace industry, your company will be looking quite different than if you cater with your technology to the chimney market or the refrigerator <laughs> market. You, right. know? you know, you will be hiring different type of people. Different people will find your company, you know, cool to work Exciting, for, you know, right? when you're working with the aerospace <laughs> industry and some others might say, well, I don't want to work for a refrigerator company. Yeah? <laughs> you, have, you have different sorts of supplier relationships. You have different sorts of distributor relationships. Right. But all together, you know, they are shaping who you are as a company. And that's a very fundamental question beyond the performance right. question, you know, and, and thinking about this in, in, in a more structured way, you know, this is, maybe one of the most important and, and most fundamental decisions that you ever will right. engage in, in 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 your early entrepreneurial journey. So in that sense, you know, it's worthwhile looking at that more detail uh, as a process of relinking and delinking. So let's do that. So this process can be conceptualized as a process of delinking and relinking. Mm. You know, we're going to explain to the, you that process in the next two slides. But let's do it one by one. You know, the first, oftentimes when you think about a technology, you know, it's developed with a purpose, meaning there's a market idea oftentimes in the mind of the inventor. Yeah? So there's oftentimes a close linking between technology and market. Yeah? So that's oftentimes, because that's oftentimes the starting point, you have to engage in another step in order to understand the spectrum of possibilities that is right. awaiting you with the technology. So that'd be like a delinking yeah, exactly. process step. You know, so you want to understand the technological resources in their own right. You know, so when is this technology general? When is it specific? What's unique about it? How could it be adapted, changed a little bit, moved yeah. around, expanded? What are some of the components of it? How can we use this technology? So we're trying to be a little bit more open-minded. Even exactly. if you start with something in mind, you might want to then analyze how it could be used in other so places. Just think too. about you know, these heat shield ties that we spoke of, you know, or, or think about the Canon example. You, know, they, yeah. you can think about these competences you know, in their own right. What can they do? Right. What are the properties of them? So you have to decouple the technological resource in a way from your market application. So you, you cut them, you know, and think about your technology in a decoupled way. And the next step then, you would say, well, I relink my technology right. with other possible market applications. Mm -hmm. So it's the basis for understanding you know, your application spectrum. But it also depends on whether you can see other opportunities. That's also not right. given ex ante. You know, it means you, you have to go out there and try to understand where can it be applied. We actually look at this type of problem, which is a very interesting one and a very right. rewarding one if you are <laughs> successful at it um, in the next segment. But for now, you know, think about this as a process of delinking 
and relinking, right. yeah, because then you can understand your, your company, the basis of your company creation in a more systematic way. I, th I think it's part of the entrepreneurial mindset in some ways to try and imagine other uses. Exactly. I think a lot of people come up with something with technology and they become fixated on the first application they think of, whereas right. what this is encouraging us to do is to really think that through and try and think of the other applications. That's actually quite an important point because there's tons of research that actually shows that you know those people who are really good at entrepreneurship have this cognitive versatility. They can look at stuff <laughs> right. from, from different angles and right. can try to understand where it fits best. Yeah? So this relinking, delinking should lead you to hopefully find attractive opportunities and, and what we call the killer application, not in a negative sense, it's in a positive <laughs> sense, because it's, you know, it should be the application where you potentially can earn most of the money. You know? so Takes like, over the whole market. You know, exactly, you know, where you have like <laughs> the opportunity to, to kill the competition. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at one, uh, this is carbon reinforced fiber. It was also developed for NASA to protect, right. to house the satellites in space with a, a slim material that doesn't weigh a lo uh, lot. This was developed in the 50s, but it took 15 years until <laughs> someone actually figured out that the killer application would be sports equipment, you know, and, and right. it could be, it's nowadays used in all types of sorts of, of sports equipment, but it took just so long. You know? So if you think about this type of, of problem that we are uh, discussing right. right now, this has huge, you know, if you are really good in identifying opportunities, this has huge potential for you in firm creation, you know, because it means you might be the first one to identify these really cool applications that will allow you to grow as a company. So in sum, you know, when you think about it, it has a twofold importance for one, the market opportunity provides you with the fertile ground on which you build your venture. And it also shapes the identity of your firm. So who you are as a company, how others see you, how you see yourself. Exactly. So it's really one of the most important decisions you're going to make as an entrepreneur, really. So in order to identify the killer application, you want to see which opportunities are out there. You know? right. And this is not trivial. And I think the interesting question is, which opportunities can't you see at first? You know, what right. can you do in order to see more of that opportunity space that is waiting for you? you know? And this will actually be not today's topic, but... But the topic of the next segment that yeah. Mark's going to walk you through. Okay, so this will be 2.2, <laughs> and I'll see you there.